Thank you, Alina. So welcome everybody. And uh, I welcome especially those who are in the middle of the night and uh, who listen to my talk. Hello, Mike. And uh, so I thank all the organizers for this great idea of uh, or organizing this uh, web seminar and also for the great idea of inviting me. So thank you very much. So I am going to speak on the representation of integers by cyclotomic binary form. Uh, you have seen the abstract, which is that uh, I will start with speaking of the representation of integers as sum of two squares. It's a classical problem, uh, and there is the constant of Landau and Ramanujan, which come there. It has been generalized by Bernays for positive definite binary quadratic forms. And uh, what I am going to explain is some joint work with uh, Etienne Fouvry and Claude Levesque, where we consider the representation of integers by the binary forms which are deduced from the cyclotomic polynomials. And uh, our work, which is published in uh, Acta Arithmetica with uh, Etienne Fouvry and Claude Levesque and in the uh, Bulletin de la Société Mathématique de France, it, it will appear in June with uh, Etienne Fouvry. It is based on uh, some results which are due to Stuart and uh, Xiao. Okay, so I start with uh, the sum of two squares. It's a classical problem which goes back to at least uh, Pierre de Fermat. And uh, the result for the prime numbers is that the prime number is a sum of two squares if and only if it is either two or else congruent to one modulo four. We have the list of uh, prime numbers which are sum of two squares, which start with two, five, 13, 13. And uh, I will give uh, very often the uh, link to the online encyclopedia of integer sequences, which is a really a beautiful database, uh, which will be very useful for, for this lecture and uh, which I recommend. So this was for prime numbers. Uh, for uh, integers in general, there is a result which uh, is the identity of Brahmagupta, which is that the product of a sum of two squares is a sum of two squares and we have, in fact, two identities depending on the sign that uh, we have here, minus plus or plus and minus. Using these two results, we deduce, it's an exercise, that a positive integer is a sum of two squares if and only if each prime divisor, which is congruent to three modulo four, occurs with an even exponent. So we have here the list of the sum of two squares and the list of the numbers which are not sums of two squares. And the goal is to look at uh, these numbers below n and to ask uh, how many of them are there, what, what is the density. And the, the first result is that uh, if you take the x, y with x squared plus y squared less than n, you do not count the x squared plus y squared, you count the x, y then you find a number which is greater than n, and therefore there is some repetition. And it's a fact that if an integer is a sum of two squares, usually there are many solutions to the equation x squared plus y squared equal m. Well, if m is prime, there is essentially one solution. Well, with the symmetries uh, x minus x, or you permute x and y. But if m is uh, as uh, s prime divisors, which are congruent to one modulo four, there are at least two power s minus one solutions. So in fact, there are many repetitions when we, we write a number as a sum of two squares. And uh, the result is that uh, the number of sum of two squares has density zero. The number is uh, asymptotically n divided by the square root of log n times the constant. And this constant is the so-called Landau-Ramanujan constant. It is given by an infinite product, uh, Eulerian product. And uh, you see that uh, this Eulerian product is known with a very high precision. I give only the first uh, digits, which are on the encyclopedia. But uh, to, to compute uh, such an uh, Eulerian product using, uh, well, uh, using the, uh, the product itself is not efficient. There are some other ways. Uh, there is a nice paper by Flajolet and Vardy that uh, you find the reference on the encyclopedia of integer sequences which uh, enables you to get many decimals of uh, this uh, Landau-Ramanujan constant. This result of uh, Landau and Ramanujan can be made a little bit more precise. We have an expansion, which is in uh, our paper with uh, Etienne Fouvry and uh, uh, Claude Levesque in Acta Arithmetica. 
uh, we have a power expansion with uh, many terms, which is uh, given by this formula. Alpha 1, alpha m are just uh, real numbers. This work on the form x squared plus y squared has been generalized by Bernays to positive definite quadratic forms. So you take a form ax squared plus bxy plus cy squared, the quadratic form. You assume that the discriminant b squared minus 4ac is not a square and is positive. And the result of Bernays is that the number of integers which are represented, which means that they are of the form f of xy, where xy are in z, this number is asymptotically c, a constant, depending on f, times n divided by square root of log n. So this is really the, the generalization of the previous result for x squared plus y squared. <coughs> this was uh, published in 1912. It was the PhD dissertation of Bernays done under Edmund Landau. So to a certain extent, we can say that this is the conclusion of a lot of work which was started with Fermat and pursued with Lagrange, Legendre, Gauss. Bernays is an interesting character. He got PhD as mentioned with Landau. After that, the year after, he got his habilitation with Zermelo. He worked with Polya, Einstein, Hermann Weil, Hilbert, Noether, van der Waarden, Erglot, and uh, he's known for the Hilbert Bernays paradox, which was published in the book with David Hilbert, Grundlagen der Mathematik, and also for the von Neumann Bernays Gödel uh, set theory. Michel, just one question, please, from Fabian Patsuki. The alpha i are algebraic or transcendental? Ah, this is a good question, which uh, we don't know. Uh, you, you mean the this constant C454? Uh, here. Ah, this alpha we don't know. Even for C54, we do not know. Uh, there are just uh, C54, we have a good expression, but we do not know whether it's transcendental or not. It is expected that it is transcendental. So, after the quadratic form, I would like to go to the forms of a higher degree. The main difference between uh, degree four, degree two, and the degree at least three is that if a positive integer is represented by a quadratic form, there are many such representations. And the reason is that a quadratic form has infinitely many automorphisms. And uh, Stanley Xiao explains in uh, his paper, which is uh, here, that uh, this is exactly the reason for which there are many representations. But if you take an irreducible binary form of higher degree, the group of automorphism is finite. So we do not expect to have so many repetitions if we have a form of higher degree. I will explain a little bit the case of uh, the form xk plus yk, where k is an integer at least 3. So for k equals 3, we look at the numbers which are sum of two cubes. And uh, you got some information in the last, uh, in the last lecture by Andrew Sutherland. And so we uh, know that uh, it's rather rare that the number is of the form xk plus yk for uh, several values of xy, that there are several representations. For k equals 4, it occurs, but it's very rare that there are several representations of the same number as a sum of two fourth power. It is expected that uh, for k at least 5, when there is a representation, this representation is unique but uh, up to symmetry, but uh, this is far from being known. So let me start with the uh, You know from the lecture of uh, Sir Vand that uh, 1729 is the smallest positive integer, which is the sum of two cubes in two essentially different ways, 10 to the cube plus nine to the cube and 12 to the cube plus one to the cube. Uh, the story is written by Hardy, who say that in 1917, he visited Ramanujan, who was in the hospital, and he told him that his taxi number was uh, 1725 and that it was a rather dull number. It, it's difficult to believe that uh, Hardy really uh, considered that it is a, a dull number because uh, 
it was already known by Frenicle de Bessy that uh, uh, this is the smallest integer, which is the sum of two cubes. But anyway, this is the, the story of uh, Hardy. Uh, this uh, uh, gave the opportunity to Littlewood to say that uh, every positive integer was one of uh, Ramanujan personal friends. There are other uh, properties of uh, 1729, which uh, I want to mention some transcendental number. If you look at the transcendental number E, the next 10 successive digits uh, of uh, this number, if you start with the uh, 1729 decimal digits, are just the 10 digits from 0 to 9 consecutively, and this is the first time that they appear consecutively. Okay, anyway, uh, this is not the main. Uh, there is a sequence of uh, taxi cab, cab numbers. These are the numbers which are the sum of two cubes in more than one way. And the first one is uh, our friend 1729. The next one is 4104. And we have a sequence. This sequence is infinite for a trivial reason. If n is in this, is, this sequence, you multiply by a cube and you have another number in the sequence. But this is not the single, uh, the only sequence of taxi cab numbers. There is another one which goes back to Fermat. Uh, you look at the smallest number that is the sum of two positive integral cubes in n ways. And in the Wolfram website, it is written TA of n. So T of one is two because one is, uh, two is uh, one square plus one square. There is one way to do it. Uh, T of two is, of course, 1729. And then you have TA of three, which is this number with the sum of two cubes in three different ways. Then you have TA four, TA five. We know one number, which is the sum of two cubes in six ways. We don't know whether it is the smallest one or not, but it is very likely that it is the smallest one. This sequence is known to be infinite. Uh, the, the proof is given in the book by Hardy and Wright. And this is a result which was uh, proved by Fermat. Uh, the numbers expressible as a sum of two positive integral cubes in n different ways exist for any n. But this is not the end. There is another sequence which is very interesting. It is the cube free taxi cab, cab numbers. Uh, if you look at uh, the number which is written on the top here, you see that it is a sum of uh, two cubes in three ways, and it is a number which is cube-free. And this is the smallest cube-free taxicab number, which was uh, found by Voita in 1981. There is another one which is known, and which is a sum of two cubes in four ways, and it is cube-free. So you have the list uh, here on the uh, website of uh, the Encyclopedia of Integer Sequences. And uh, the question is to know whether this uh, list is uh, finite or not. And it's interesting because there is a result by Silverman that if this sequence of cube-free taxicab numbers with n representation is infinite, then the Mordelvey rank of the elliptic curve x cube plus y cube equal a n tends to infinity with n. Well, this may be considered as an evidence that the sequence should be finite, but uh, we do not know. After the cubes, I would like to continue the story of uh, Hardy and the taxi cab, because Hardy said that uh, he uh, asked uh, Ramanujan whether he knew what a number which was the sum of two fourth power in two different ways. And uh, the answer of uh, Ramanujan was that uh, he does not know, but uh, very likely this is a very large number. As a matter of fact, such a number was known by Euler, uh, which is the number which is given here. And uh, uh, an infinite family of one parameter solutions for this equation is uh, known by Elkis, and it's not trivial. It's not just by multiplying by a fourth power. So we know uh, that the sequence is infinite. Now, uh, for the sum of uh, two higher powers, uh, when we looked at the sum of two squares, we saw that it was given by a congruence, but this is definitely not the case for uh, higher power. And 
uh, one reason is that uh, there are not enough primes of this form. The, no, the primes of the form x cubed plus y cubed, uh, we know a finite number of them, but uh, we do not know whether the, the, the list is infinite. Uh, as was explained by Andrew uh, in May 7, a number is of this form if and only if it is represented by a polynomial in one variable, 3x squared minus 3x plus 1. So we, we understand rather well the numbers which are represented by quadratic binary forms, but uh, by polynomials in one variable of degree 2, this is something which is uh, not uh, well known. It's the same if you look at the uh, fourth power. If an odd integer is a sum of two fourth power, each prime number which is not congruent to one modulo eight has an even exponent, but this is not sufficient. Uh, you have here the li list of the sum of uh, at most two non-zero fourth power, which start with zero, which is an empty sum. And uh, if you look at uh, the list of uh, primes of the form x4 plus y4, we have this list, but we do not know whether it is finite or not. The largest which is known is a generalized Fermat prime with more than one million digits. Uh, you can get uh, some further information on the prime numbers which are represented by uh, x to the k plus y to the k, where k is a power of 2, up to 32. So I repeated that uh, there are many things we do not know. Uh, I just want to quote some results which are known and which are very impressive. It is if you take the form x squared plus y4, which is not a uh, homogeneous form, but if you take also the form x cubed plus 2y cubed, which is a cubic form, uh, then it is known that uh, there are infinitely many primes of this form, and the right asymptotic order is known by uh, Friedlander and Ivanjec for x squared plus y4, and by Is Brown for x cubed plus 2y cubed. So we, we know for x cubed plus 2y cubed, but we do not know for x cubed plus y cubed. So, uh, I am going to investigate the representation of integers by binary form of degree at least three. What do we expect? You take a binary form of degree at least three with non-zero discriminant, and you want to count the number of integers of absolute value at most n, which are represented by this form. So there are f of x, y, where x, y are in z. What do we expect? Uh, I can give you the answer. It's a constant times n with the exponent 2 over d. And the reason is the following. You look at the integers x and y, which are of absolute value less than n with the exponent 1 over d. So the number of uh, these integers is n with the exponent 2 over d. And each of them will give a value, which is bounded essentially by n. And we expect that uh, these numbers will be essentially distinct. So this should give the answer. In the converse way, if you have a number which is of the form uh, fxy, if you have a pair xy with fxy less than n, uh, most often x and y will be bounded by n to the exponent 1 over d. It will be always the case if the form is definite positive. But uh, if it is not definite positive, you have few xy for which the maximum is not less than n to the power 1 over d. So this is what we expect, a constant times n with the exponent 2 over d. And as I explained, we, we want first to count the xy, which has the property that f of xy is bounded. And the expected result was proved by Mahler in 1933. Uh, you fix a, an integer, uh, a real number z, and you count the number of xy, not the number of fxy, but only the number of xy, so that fxy is z than z. This number is essentially the area of the fundamental domain times z to the power 2 over d, plus an error term, which is 1 over d if there is no linear factor, which will be the case interesting for us. So this constant f is the area, Lebesgue measure, of the fundamental domain which is defined by this. So uh, this paper of uh, Mahler, like all the papers of Mahler, 
uh, is available on this uh, website, which uh, uh, gives all the, the papers. Now, uh, I want to look at the representation of integers by forms of degree three and four. I repeat here that uh, what we expect in general, oh, uh, excuse me, I, I have a small problem. Uh, what, I don't know what you see. I, I'm afraid that- uh, No, it's, it's all good. I mean, it's all looking- ah, Yes, but for me, I do not see anything. Oh. I, I lost. I, I lost the my file, so okay, it's okay. It's okay. It's not... okay for, for me. It came back. It, it, it disappeared, but uh, now it, it's back. So I told you that we expect that this number is a constant time n to the power two of d, and this was proved in uh, three papers: two for the cubic binary forms and one for the quartic form by Christopher Houlet. For the cubic forms, uh, he first proved it in 1967 in some cases and the other cases in 2000, and for quartic form in 1986. So the case of degree three and four is uh, solved by Houlet. There are a few other cases where uh, the problem has been solved. These are the forms xd plus yd, where d is at least three. They are asymptotic estimate. And also, more generally, hello Mike, by, for uh, AXD plus BYD, when A, B are non zero integers. The general case was obtained only very recently by Stuart and uh, Xiao. And the result is the one which is expected. You take a binary form of degree D at least three with non zero discriminant. The result is that there exists a constant CF such that for N going to infinity, the number Rn, Rf of n, of integers bounded by n, which are represented by f, is equivalent to Cf n with the exponent 2 over d. I will come back to the error term, which is quite uh, sharp in that paper. And the constant Cf, as we expect, is uh, related with the area of the fundamental domain. And it is this area multiplied by a number which is less than one, which depends on the group of automorphism of f, and af is the area of the fundamental domain. So this was uh, published in 2019. OK, this is more or less the historical survey that I wanted to give. And now I come to the main topic of my talk, which is to consider cyclotomic binary forms. I start with the cyclotomic polynomials in one variable. It is Subject, but uh, I can repeat it. I will define the cyclotomic polynomial phi n by induction. We start with phi 1 is t minus 1, and phi n of t is t n minus 1 divided by the product of the phi d for d dividing n and d div different from n. So if we take this uh, definition, we get the decomposition of t n minus 1, and we can uh, compute the phi n by induction. If uh, n is a prime number, we have tp minus 1 plus tp minus 2 plus t plus 1. For example, phi 2, phi 3, phi 5 are given by this formula. Uh, you have other formulae for 4, 6, 8, and 12. And you see that uh, phi 4 and phi 6 are polynomials of degree 2. And this is t squared plus 1. T square, uh, phi, phi 6 is, is just phi 3 of minus t. And this is a general uh, uh, property that uh, phi 2 m of t is phi m of minus t when m is odd. And then you have these two polynomials which are, have degree 4. You have phi 5, which has degree 4, and also phi 10 because of this formula. And so the degree of this uh, cyclotomic polynomial is uh, the so called Euler torsion function, small phi of n. There are three phi in my, my talk. This uh, is phi for the Euler torsion function, this one for the cyclotomic polynomial, and the capital one for the cyclotomic form, cyclotomic binary form. So we get the cyclotomic binary form just by making homogeneous the polynomial phi n. So this is a binary form of degree n. You have the two first one, phi 1 and phi 2, which have degree 1. 
I will just mention them once later, but otherwise they will not be so interesting for us. We have the forms, the cyclotomic forms of degree three, uh, of degree two, which are phi three, phi four, and phi six. But phi six is essentially the same as phi three. They represent the same integers. And then you have the forms of uh, degree four, which are phi five, phi eight, phi twelve, and phi ten, which is phi five of x and minus y. So these are the objects that uh, we are interested in. We want to investigate the number of integers which are represented by these binary forms. We can use the result of Stuart and Xiao if we fix one binary form. Uh, we know that the number of integers which are represented by phi n is, so I denote it by r phi n of n, it is a constant depending on phi n, n to the 2 over d, where d is the degree of uh, phi n. And there is an error term. And this uh, constant, c phi n, is the area times a uh, small number wn. So the error term, I did not tell you before what it was, but I give you only for when d is even. Uh, and you see that for d, at least 10, it, it is one over d. So you can consider that this is essentially one over d. If I n, this number here, is the area of the fundamental domain, and this small wn is one over eight or one over four, depending on whether four divides n or not. And this depends on the group of automorphism of phi n, which is isomorphic either to the dihedral group d2 with four elements, which is here, or to the dihedral group d4 with eight elements in case four divides n. So we, we have a good knowledge of what is uh, this uh, constant c phi n. Uh, maybe I can say a little bit more about the cyclotomic fundamental domain. You have uh, here a picture which uh, was uh, given to me by uh, Francesco Papalardi, which is the image of the uh, curve phi n of x, y for n from 1 to 40. So you see that uh, here, do you see the, my, my uh, pointer? Yeah. OK, so here you have phi 1, which is uh, x minus 1. Here you have phi 2. I told you that I will mention them only once, so it's here. And otherwise, you start with uh, phi 3, phi 4, phi 5, and so on. And so these are the fundamental domain. You have the pictures here for 3, 4, 7, 9, 12, 15, and 20. Uh, it's uh, not too difficult to prove that uh, this uh, domain tends to the square centered at the, the origin and with side 2. We have a more precise result, which is given here. But when n is large, it's very close to the square, as you see here. It's another exercise that uh, the cyclotomic fundamental domain is convex if and only if n is either a prime or twice a prime or a power of 2. Uh, if you look at uh, this one, which is uh, the n is 9, uh, if you look uh, carefully, you will see that it is not convex. It is not a prime, nor twice a prime. Okay, so the first result I want to explain is about the number of integers which are represented by at least one of the binary cyclotomic forms, where n is the index is at least 3, and this number is asymptotically a constant alpha times n divided by the product of log n minus a constant beta times n divided by log n to the three quarter plus a big O of n over log n. Okay, I will explain the successive terms. The main term is uh, this one with alpha, and alpha is just the, the sum of c phi 4 and c phi 3. So we have uh, the value which is here. It occurs from the contribution of the two quadratic forms, phi 3 and phi, th phi 4. Phi 6 is the same, uh, give the same contribution. The next term, which is uh, this one with beta, comes from the contribution of the numbers which are represented by the form phi 4 and also by the form phi 3. B 
because uh, here we counted them twice. So we have to subtract two that we counted twice. And so this gives the number beta. And uh, I will explain that the error term is sharp. And this error term takes into account all the binary forms, cyclotomic forms, of degree at least four. So uh, here we have the contribution of the forms of degree two, and there is some error term. And then we have the uh, contribution of all the other cyclotomic forms. Okay, we start with the. We already saw what is phi four. It is the sum of two squares, and the story is very similar. If we look at uh, the form x squared plus x y plus y squared, the numbers which are represented by this quadratic form, the prime numbers, are those which are either three or which are congruent to one modulo three. And it turns out that the, the form x squared plus three y squared represent the same numbers. Next, for the product of two numbers, which are represented by this form, we have a number which is again represented by the same form because of the formula which is here, which is just a formula for the norm of a product of element in the cyclotomic field Q of square root of three, minus three. So Q of zeta three. So uh, thanks to that, we can give a criterion for a number to be represented by this form. And uh, it is called the Lushian numbers on the Encyclopedia of Integer Sequences. These numbers, which can be written like this, are those for which the prime divisors of m congruent to 2 modulo 3 occur with an even exponent. So we have the same thing. We have the list of numbers which are represented by this form the list of numbers which are not represented by this form, and what is the density of each? The result is that the density of this one is zero, and the density of this one is one. The number of positive integers which are represented by this form, x squared plus xy plus y squared, is a constant times n over log n square root, and this constant, again, is given by a Euler product, and the this uh, constant uh, occurs with many uh, decimal digits. Uh, you will not find uh, more than six digits in the encyclopedia, but you will find uh, so many digits in this paper of uh, Etari, Ramari, and Surel, uh, which uh, is about fast multi-precision computation. And again, like for the sum of two squares, we have an asymptotic uh, formula for the number of integers which are represented with some other real numbers, alpha one prime, alpha two prime, and uh, we do not know whether they are transcendental or not, even for C53. Now, uh, this takes into account the main term, which was called alpha, which is C54 plus C53. The next term in my formula was the numbers which are represented by the two forms. So they are both of the form x y, phi 4 of x y and phi 3 of u v and we have to count them and uh, we know because of the previous criteria that uh, the one which are of this form are the one for which the prime divisors not congruent to 1 modulo 12 occur with an even exponent and this enables us to give another asymptotic formula which is again like the previous ones in the with uh, Claude Levesque and uh, Etienne Fouvry and we have an asymptotic expansion with the number beta, which is given by a nice formula involving some, some Euler product. And again, we know uh, many digits thanks to the paper of Etari, Ramari, and Surel. So this is for the two main terms. I want to investigate the error term. In the main theorem that I mentioned before, we had an asymptotic estimate for the number of integers which are represented by one at least of the form with n at least three. So we have to look at uh, the forms of higher degree. But uh, when we look at these forms, we have all the prime numbers we come, which come in, because uh, the prime numbers are represented by many cyclotomic binary forms, all the phi with the index p to the r, where p is an odd prime and r is at least one. And of course, uh, p equal to occurs as a value of uh, phi two, for example, phi four. So if we want to count the number of integers which are represented by one at least of the binary form, we have always all the primes which come into the picture. 
And uh, this gives the error term. It gives, at the same time, the fact that uh, the error term is optimal. You cannot do better. But uh, this is not exactly what we expect. We would like to get rid of the prime numbers which uh, disturb the, the situation. So what we will do now is to omit the value 1, 1, and we ask that the maximum of xy is at least 2. So we will count the number of integers, which are of the form phi n of xy. m is less than n, but xy are restricted to the maximum of x and y at least 2. And what is changed here com compared with theorem 1 is only the error term which is a little bit more precise. It is n divided by log n to the power 3 half. So this is the result for quadratic forms. Uh, I have to explain the error term. Why do we have this error term, which is uh, so, so small? So we have to take into account all the forms with phi of n greater than d. We have infinitely many forms. So I use this notation, ad of n, when d is fixed, is the number of m which are of the form phi n of xy. And for a greater than or equal to d, I introduce the restriction that the maximum of xy is at least 2. And so uh, the theorem that I just mentioned states that uh, the number of integers which are in a greater than or equal to 2 of n is given by this formula. Alpha n over square root of log n minus beta n over the cube root the, the, the root 3 over 4 of log n, and then this error term, which is here. So I will explain that, and we have to, to look at uh, infinitely many n. If we fix one form phi n, the contribution to the error term is very small. It's n to the power 2 over d, but uh, it's uh, much smaller than that. But there are infinitely many forms. So we need a uniform estimate, and we have a uniform estimate which is not exactly what we expect because we have n2 over d, but what is good is that we have an explicit constant, 29, and this will be good enough. So this is the number of uh, uh, integers in a greater than or equal to d of n. Uh, phi of n is at least d, and uh, these numbers are represented by one of the form. We will uh, see where this uh, 1.161 comes from. So for that, we need the low bound for the cyclotomic polynomials. There is a result which goes back to the work of Guri and Dovac in 1970 and during 1977, which gives such an estimate, which is phi n of t greater than 2 to the minus phi of n times the maximum of 1 and phi and t to the power of phi of n. Uh, they get this result in the general case of the norm, norm form for a CM field. And uh, this is the case for the cyclotomic field. In their case, which is more general, the estimate that they get is best possible. And they give an example for that. But uh, in the case of cyclotomic uh, forms, this is not enough and we need an improvement. And the improvement comes from a careful study of the cyclotomic polynomial. The cyclotomic polynomial uh, takes uh, only positive values. It has a minimum, an infimum. And this infimum, we can uh, estimate it. And uh, the estimate that we have here, again, is sharp. And so this gives a low bound for phi n of xy, which enables us, thanks to the assumption max xy greater than or equal to 2, to give an upper bound for n when phi n of xy is equal to m. This n cannot be large. Phi of n is bounded by log m. And this gives an upper bound for n. And this is where you see the constant uh, 1 0.161, which occurs in the previous result. So this is because of this upper bound that uh, we get uh, uh, the explicit estimate that I mentioned, and which, which is uh, what, uh, what we need. So I, I told you that this estimate for the number of integers uh, uh, which uh, are represented by a form with phi of n greater than or equal to d was not optimal. We would like to get something more precise. And for that, we need some auxiliary result, which may be of uh, independent interest, on the number of integers which are represented by two uh, non-isomorphic binary forms of the same degree. 
So we, I, I gave the definition of automorphism of form. I give here the definition of isomorphism of form. Two binary forms are isomorphic. If there exists a matrix which is invertible with rational coefficients, so that uh, f1 of x1, x2 is f2 of u1, x1 plus u2, x2, u3, x1 plus x, u4, x2. And now I would like to look at uh, two uh, binary forms which are not isomorphic. And at, I would like to look at are taken by both uh, forms at the same. So you have x1, x2, x3, x4, but the values are the same. And we will need an upper bound for the number of x1, x2, x3, x4. Later, we will bound the number of uh, f1, x1, x2, but now we, we bound the number of x1, x2, x3, x4. And there is this bound. You have two non-isomorphic binary form of the same degree. The discriminants are non-zero. And there is an assumption that we cannot avoid that one at least is not divisible by a linear form with rational coefficients. Then the number of x such that the two forms take the same value is bounded by b with an exponent which is essentially one for d at least sufficiently large. So we have a, a, an explicit upper bound for this. I will just say a few words about the, the proof. I see that time is passing, so I will be brief for the sketch of the proof. The proof is based on results of uh, Is Brown, Poulet, Salberger, and in fact, uh, this result is very close to the result, some results, auxiliary results in the paper by Stewart and Xiao that I mentioned before. So we want an upper bound for the number of integral points on the hypersurface F1 equal F2. Uh, we split the work in two parts. The first part is to use the result of uh, Per Salberger on the number of points for which the projective point does not lie on a complex projective line which is contained in X. And uh, there are some assumptions in the work of Salberger that we have to check, but uh, it works and we get uh, the main result the main term. And the second part is, of course, to estimate the number of points which uh, do not lie on a projective line containing x. And uh, we have to make some work to, uh, to, to, to check how many there are on each line. And uh, this is where we use uh, the fact that the forms are not isomorphic. And then one uses an upper bound for the number of these lines. And this gives the error term, which is big O of b, uh, if not 1 plus epsilon x. I will use this for estimating the number of uh, numbers of integers which are represented by two cyclotomic binary forms of the same degree. So I start with two binary forms, cyclotomic binary form phi n1 and phi n2, and I want to count how many m can be represented by the two numbers, phi n1, two forms, phi n1 and phi n2. And the result is that there are not so many of them. And the exponent here is gamma d over d. This is explained just by the fact that now we bound m, and before we were bounding a and b. So more or less, uh, a and b occurs with the exponent d, which is the degree of the form. And so this is why we have to bound that. So essentially, we say that the, the number is bounded by n with the exponent 1 over d plus epsilon. So there are not so many repetitions for the forms of the same degree, assuming that they are not isomorphic. So this raises the question, uh, how do we know whether two forms are isomorphic or not? And uh, the answer is that uh, we use this corollary to get the answer. So isomorphic forms, we take two integers, n1, n2, n1 is less than n2, and the following conditions are equivalent. The two forms are isomorphic, which imply that they have the same degree. The second condition is that the two binary forms represent the same integers. And the, same, the third condition is that n1 is odd, n1 is a small one, and n2 is 2n1. So this gives a complete criterion. Uh, by the way, uh, when am I supposed to, to complete in uh, five minutes or something like that? Five minutes is perfect. Yes, Michel. Thank okay. you. OK, so I can give a few hints on, on the proof of this is too difficult. First, we prove that uh, if the two forms are isomorphic, 
then n1 is odd and n2 is 2n1. And the proof is as follows. You assume that they are isomorphic. So the primitive roots of unity of the corresponding indices, n1 and n2, are related by this with a matrix, which is a regular matrix with rational coefficients. And therefore, the two cyclotomic fields, q of zeta n1 and q of zeta n2, are the same. But now it's uh, something which is not difficult to prove that uh, the torsion subgroup of q of zeta n, the cyclotomic field of uh, index n, is cyclic of order n if n is even and of order 2n if n is odd. So it just gives the conclusion 3. The very easy part of the corollary is that uh, if n1 is odd and n2 is 2n1, the two binary forms represent the same integers just because of this formula, which we saw several times. Phi 2n is phi m of minus t. And now the interesting part is 2 implies 1. Assume that the two binary forms represent the same integers. First, we prove that they have the same degree. And this is just by counting how many integers are represented. It is essentially n to the power 2 over d. And it is the same for phi n1 and phi n2. So the d is the same. So we have phi n1 equal phi n2. Now that uh, they have the same degree, we look at the integers which are represented by both forms. And this is the same as the numbers which are represented by one or the other. So it's not uh, so small. And because of the previous result, we deduce that the two forms are isomorphic. OK, so uh, I will uh, complete by uh, giving a result which is uh, valid for any integer d, which is the value of a totient, the, the Euler totient function. We call such a number a totient. A totient is a positive integer, which is the value of the Euler totient function phi. So it's a d, so that there exists n with phi of n equal d. And I will denote by d dagger the next totient, which is greater than d. So it is always at least d plus 2. And it is bounded by 2d by uh, the results on uh, the uh, prime numbers, Bertrand postulate, as it is called. So we have a list of even integers which are not values of Euler tick function. And you see that sometimes there are two consecutive numbers which are not such values. And uh, here you have four consecutive uh, uh, even integers, which means that uh, if you take d equal 240, then d dagger is 250. So this is a list of non totion Even n such that phi of n equal n has no solution. Uh, this is not so, uh, we, we do not know so well on this, but uh, there are several results of Ford, which give some uh, explanation of uh, what is going on there. And now I come to the main result, uh, the last main result of uh, my talk. We fixed an integer d at least four, because for d equal two, this was the uh, theorem one. D is at least four. We take n, which tends to infinity, and we count the number of integers m for which there exists an integer n and the xy with phi n of xy equal m, phi of n is at least d, and the maximum of xy is at least 2. And we have an asymptotic uh, expansion for that. It is cd n to the power 2 over d plus a big O essentially of 2 over d dagger. Uh, we did not succeed to get it for d equal 4, but we have it at least for d at least 6. What is this constant? It is what we expect. We look at the cyclotomic binary form of degree d, which are not isomorphic. And not isomorphic means that uh, n is not congruent to 2 modulo 4. So this is the main term. And now for the remainder, uh, it is n to the power 2 of uh, d dagger. And uh, I would like to explain that uh, if d is at least uh, 6, because we want to be in this case, and if d dagger is d plus 2, which uh, occurs sometimes, as we have seen in the previous example, then the error term is optimal. So uh, to prove that it is optimal, I assume that d is a totient, so it's uh, some phi of n, and d plus 2 is also a totion. This means uh, d dagger is equal to d plus 2. 
And we look at the numbers phi m of uv with the degree of phi m is d dagger, which is d plus 2. And among these numbers, we prove that the positive proportion is not of the form phi n of ab with phi of n equality. And this will show that uh, there exists a positive constant such that the number of integers which are represented by a form of degree at least d is at least a d of n, so this is the degree is exactly d, plus a number which is a, a constant times n power two, d2 over d plus 2. The proof of uh, this result uses a lemma, which is the finite lemma, which is the following. If you take an integer n at least 2 and a prime number which divides n, then for all a and b in z, phi n of a b is congruent to 0 or 1 modulo p. And we need similar results for uh, the uh, congruences modulo 4 and 9. Uh, so uh, this uh, is uh, sufficient to prove the result which is here. The name uh, confinement was uh, coined by uh, Etienne Fouvry in our joint paper, which was accepted in uh, September 2019, because the values of phi n of a are confined in the classes modulo p, only 0 and 1 modulo p. So when uh, this paper was accepted, we did not expect that uh, the word confinement would become so popular after that. So with this word, I, I will uh, stop my lecture.